Alright, Selim, thank you very much for having this call. I really much uh, appreciate your time. It started somewhere a long time ago with a Just Top network, as far as I can remember. Uh, that's a long time ago. Um, but can you elaborate a little bit more on that, on the success of Airbus in China? Thank you, Gert. Uh, pleasure to be with you here. Uh, we started to, uh, to work in China since a very long time, as you said. We started the, the first activity we started in Beijing with the Beijing shared network just up. It started back in 2003. Uh, the concept of shared network is uh, is quite unique uh, in the Chinese market. We have it's the concept is having major uh, network that are shared between different public safety and governmental organizations, and uh, we are leading the way in terms of shared network. You have today in China uh, seven shared networks. Uh, four of them uh, are provided by Airbus. So we are extremely proud to support the organization there. We are in Beijing, but we have also Guangzhou, uh, also Urumqi and Nanjing. Okay, uh, so one question. What is exactly, for those who don't understand that, what is exactly a shared network? Who is sharing that network, for example? So the concept of shared network is having a, a unique organization. So in Beijing, it is just up, who will build operate and maintain a network that will be shared by different governmental organizations. Uh, typically, uh, instead of having the police organization having a dedicated network, the fire, net, the firefighters, uh, the, the ambulance and emergency services, uh, it's much more cost effective and much more uh, optimized to have one bigger network that is shared by different organizations and that is operated by a, a main body. And uh, this is what is the concept of shared network. So here in Beijing, uh, we have the, the network serving uh, uh, police, public safety, but also uh, metro lines, uh, water company, energy companies, and different uh, public uh, safety and business critical organizations. Basically, that's not different from elsewhere in the world, right? That's, that's often a, a way networks are shared in other countries as well. So that there's no difference there. There, there, there are. It, it's really on a country by country basis. I mean, uh, in some countries they have different networks, even sometimes different technology by users. In some countries they have one uh, shared network, different organization. If we talk about uh, Middle East, for example, you know we have uh, NIDA in uh, in Dubai, with also a concept of shared networks because it's one major network operated by one entity that is shared through different organizations. Uh, some other countries in the regions are not the same. Uh, we have some uh, countries where we have one network by organization because it depends on a certain of factors. So I would say what, there is no model that is better than others. There are different organizations and different approaches. Yes. Well, and when we look at, at the networks you have provided, and when I specifically look at events, for example, we had a lot of events going on in the Middle East. Uh, that, that's, your, that's where you're based, right? As I understand. Uh, but but there's more to that, right? Uh, when we look at the, the Olympic Games, for example, that's another major project for Airbus. Absolutely. So uh, when we get back and focus on, on, on Beijing, we have been supporting there. And actually, Airbus Tetra Network is the only network in the world that have supported two uh, Olympics. We've uh, supported the, the Summer Olympics in Beijing back in 2008, uh, 2008 and we supported the Winter Olympic uh, that happened just here at the beginning of the year in 2022. Uh, it's massive events. Uh, it's quite a, an intensive use to give you some ideas. For the last Winter Olympics, uh, we had to support more than 70 million calls over the periods. Uh, and during the busy hours, we're actually going to peak that were more than 290 calls over one hour and more than 40,000 users on one site. So it gives you the scale. So it's not, it's really, it's whatever, it's what it's supposed to do at critical networks, but only on a bigger and much more optimized and notified scale. So it's really uh, important. It's, it's make it really specific in terms of usage, in terms of dimensionings. And we are extremely proud to have been able to support that uh, for the, for the opening, for example, of the, of the last Olympics, we had more than 40 thousand users are on the different sites coordinating the different operations from the police to the emergency services to the energy and to the organization committee and the first time this year on the olympics also we had something which never happened before you know the famous uh, skiing uh, 
uh, skiing and different uh, activity around skiing. They were using this year also the Tetra specifically for these activities. So it's also a lot of innovations and a lot of uh, additional usage that we have been very proud to, uh, to implement with our partner and with our users, uh, just up with the operator of the network in, in Beijing. Okay, so, but what is, because I understand the size, because it's huge, such a network, uh, and so many users, 40,000 you just mentioned, but what is the most difficult thing to get that organized from your point of view? Uh, part of the answer is in your questions. It's really about organizations, organizations from a tactical point of view, from a usage point of view, from a user's point of view. There is a lot of preparation work. It's about the dimensioning. It's also about the creation, the right uh, groups in terms of interactions. You need to adapt the technology to the to the say, parameters, tactical parameters of the events you want to organize here. Uh, the size is a major is a major uh, parameters, obviously, but it's really about how it is organized. You need to work with all the end users organizations on seeing how their tactical operation is going to be to cover that site. Uh, here, it's making also a different way on the fact that a lot of the the, the Olympics village and infrastructure have to be built. So we had also to cover the roads to go there. We had to coordinate with different. Uh, authorities to make sure that the coverage of the road is done on the best way to uh, allocate the right resourcing in terms of uh, activities for all the forces. We had also to include uh, new users. Uh, we've been working also with our, uh, with our uh, colleagues from Airbus Helicopter to coordinate also the helicopter uh, part that will be associated to the athlete evacuation if needed. And uh, unfortunately, this year for the Winter Olympics, it has been needed. So the system here is really, uh, it's a lot about organizing. It's a lot about configuration. It's a lot about, about parametering and customizing the usage based on the, on the tactical requirements. Okay. And here, the tactical requirements are everything but standard because you are not only covering the tactical safety requirements where you have to coordinate different agency. Obviously, you have the emergency services, the health authorities, but also the organization committee and the different sports and athlete organizations. And put it all together, uh, it's quite a challenge and it required a lot of expertise. So we are extremely proud and very happy to have the, 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 the support and being able to provide that support to, uh, to allow these executions in a very smooth way. We are very happy in this kind of event because if you don't hear from us during the event, it means it's perfect. So you haven't heard anything during and we're <laughs> well, very happy that, to talk about that, it that after. Is, that is something I just wanted to mention because there are so many companies claiming that they are supporting the Winter Olympics with their communications, I found out. Uh, and, and there's no official communications from the Olympics com committee, of course, because th th there are some rules around that. Uh, but, but specifically for Airbus, th this is a major project and that is an official announcement, right? What you just made. Yeah, yeah we, we, we communicated a little bit about it last year when we, yeah. uh, when we signed the contract to start the implementation and the, and the preparations. Uh, we have been supporting a massive amount of, uh, of uh, of events lately. We are very proud of that. We are very happy about that because it's also uh, uh, life is getting back also as much as possible to, uh, uh, to, to to normal. So we have been very happy to support. We're talking about Middle East. We supported the, the opening of the Formula One season. So we've been opening the supporting uh, all the Grand Prix here. We started with the one in Bahrain. Uh, we've been after that to, uh, to, to Jeddah. Uh, we did the closing last year in December in, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, there are a certain number of events that are starting around the world. We just finished uh, the Dubai Expo, which was also a, a major event, uh, a six-month event. Usually when we talk about events, it's a couple of weeks. Uh, here for Expo, it was six months. So six months non-stop support with, uh, with NIDA, the critical operators. Yeah. And it was also extremely successful. We are very proud of that. So uh, it, it's also very nice to have the, 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 the chance and, the, and the, the opportunity to support also this kind of event that are more around uh, bringing people together. Uh, there is nothing more peaceful for us than the Olympics. So being part of this kind of event is also uh, very nice. And, uh, and we are very happy to be part of this, uh, these adventures when we can. Well, I, I can imagine that you're very proud, uh, but when, when I look ahead on, on events, are there any events that are on your wish list that you would like to support uh, that, that you haven't supported yet? Because the Olympics is probably the biggest event in the world, but there might be another event which has maybe other difficulties or challenges that you would like to have on your wish list. 
there are there are many uh, there are some that are already on the upcoming list we are already working now i'm giving you an exclusivity uh, we are working on preparing the uh, the football world cup that is coming uh, we are working on different events that are coming so we usually don't talk to them about them in advance but uh, i think this one is a uh, going to be a, a huge one we, we've been present in, uh, in in qatar for a very long time uh, we are working in a certain number of countries uh, so we are preparing for a lot of things to come so uh wish list uh, we are already part we are very happy to be part of many things we are starting now we are preparing you know it's ramadan here in the middle east we are supporting the authorities in different countries because during ramadan you have a lot of also uh, uh, ceremonies in the region so we are supporting in uae in Saudi Arabia, we're getting ready for the Hajj season, who will start yeah, soon that's a big event, in Saudi right? Arabia. Yeah. Absolutely, that's a massive event. Uh, the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is reopening again to uh, uh, to pilgrims. The event this year on a more on a higher scale than previously. We've been supporting this event for the past uh, five years, yeah. uh, and we are very proud to continue to do that. So. This, this, these events are, are keeping us pretty busy here, being in uh, in Middle East or in, or in Asia. Uh, we've been supporting also a certain number of events in China and getting ready for some others. Uh, situation is a bit more complicated right now as we speak, obviously there, but uh, we are very uh, confident that things will get back to a uh, to a better stage very soon. And and all of those events, Salim, uh, Tetra is the way to go for voice communication. Still the way to go, right? Uh, I, I think the way to go is hybrid. There is yeah. nothing. It's it's a mix. Uh, it's a mix. We need you need to get the best thing from each technology. Uh, what we are doing and more here, uh, Beijing. It was not only Tetra. Tetra was really a, a big part of it, but we are using more and more also uh, Agnet that you, uh, you yeah. you've heard about, and uh, Agnet as a collaboration platform is also bringing a lot of applications. So uh, Tetra as a voice is one of it. We integrated also with uh, either dedicated or public uh, LT networks. So we make the whole thing together. And the idea, what we are supporting now is really about having Agnet as the, the gateway and the, uh, the glue platforms in the middle of it. And Agnet will provide you different application as per usage. So when you have Agnet, you will have Tetra as a possibility for voice, you will have access to the CCTV network. So we, we integrate within Agnet. Also, the, it played the role of coordination with the CCTV network, with uh, sensors. If you decide to go with sensor technology, we can integrate also that with uh, drone management when there is a part of it. Agnet in, during the Dubai Expo was also associated in the, with the ticketing management, with the control and the access control. So it's really a mix of different technology. I do believe Tetra will still have a massive play to role there because a uh, role to play here because the voice is still the killer app when we go to security and public safety. Uh, you need to coordinate that and integrate more. So should it be Tetra only? No. It has to be voice with association with other applications. Yes, and these applications uh, are being being developed by partners of yours and by yourself probably, right? And I've been to one of those app events uh, uh, a few years ago. So there's a lot of activity from Airbus on that part as well. So to, com to complete the whole package uh, for, for events, for example, but also for other uh, occasions, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly the way we are pushing it. Is, uh, so Agnet is positioned as the platform of different applications and the collaboration platforms, and we want to integrate a large number of applications. We have open APIs. Uh, we work with a lot of startups, but also bigger companies to integrate these APIs and to allow to enrich this uh, public safety apps market or uh, security uh, platform apps market. We want to integrate, we want to play the role of integrators or play the role of application suppliers if there is a bigger network than in there. And uh, we can provide these Agnet applications, integrations. We can provide also access to other digital portfolio of Airbus. We work with our colleagues from helicopters, from intelligence, from satellite communications. From uh, We've developed a new module around aeronautics where we integrate with our Airbus commercial colleagues. So a, a lot of things that we can do here. And uh, I think that's the way forward, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to see much more of that uh, during the upcoming Critical Communications World in Vienna. You will be there, oh, Airbus will be there, Olivier will be there, the whole team will be there. So I'm looking forward to see much more and the latest developments of Airbus. And as far as 
because I can understand right now, and if I listen to you very carefully, um, if it's about events, if it's about huge and large events, Airbus is the way to go, right? I think we are a very good way to go. Definitely not the one one, but we have the experience and we have a lot of solution here. So uh, we will be, uh, we can guarantee you a certain amount of, uh, of solutions and experience that will make sure as much as possible that your event is successful. We have the experience. Uh, CCW absolutely will be showing a lot of things there and we'll be very happy to, uh, to see you there with, uh, with the team. Okay, Celebori, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you.